Thank you. And welcome back. It's time for our Independence Day edition of Capital Report with Pat McGuigan of CapitalBeatOK.com. Pat, uh, in your commentary this week on our country's independence, it shed light on the history of John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin. Why are these men still important for us today? Well, I find intriguing all their, their story together as well as separate. Um, it was actually on July 2nd that uh, the Continental Congress passed the Resolution of Independence. Uh, and it was on July 3rd that John Adams referred to that action in a letter to his wife Abigail saying from now on this should be celebrated as you know the greatest of all celebrations and it's a lot of the things we do on the 4th of July mm -hmm. were what John Adams described uh, in that letter. The resolution was dated July 4th and it was delivered to Congress on July 5th. So you had, you had a sequence of several days there. And then the famous version that we all see signed was signed on August 2nd. Um, Adams, of course, was the guy who was most responsible for picking Thomas Jefferson to write uh, the Declaration mm -hmm. of Independence. And serving on the committee were Adams, Jefferson, and Franklin. Um, these men were all known as skeptics to some degree, although Adams was probably the most devout Christian of the three, but they were skeptics. And yet, by that point in the proceedings uh, of the founding of our country, Jefferson had said that he swore by the God who made me. I swear mm -hmm. by the God who made me that uh, he would not tolerate any uh, further British rule under the circumstances that existed at that point. And of course, Adams, and Jefferson are fascinating to me because Adams was more of a nationalist and Jefferson more of a libertarian, states' mm -hmm. rights kind of guy, uh, despite his devotion to personal liberty. And they became very estranged and separated, uh, angry at each other during uh, later the pre their presidencies, even during Washington's presidency. And that's preface to my conclusion, but I will say, Ben Franklin in 1787, in June of 1787 at the Constitutional Convention, uh, things had been deadlocked for weeks, and it was basically over, are each of the states to be treated exactly equal, or are they to be mm -hmm. apportioned representation based on population? And the, Continental, uh, the Co Constitutional Convention was deadlocked. So Ben Franklin, of all people, the ultimate uh, skeptic of the age, right. uh, a very knowledgeable, intelligent man, but he stood up and he basically said, we ought to say some prayers like we used to. Uh, he asked for them to pray to the Father of Lights, um, uh, the founder of liberty. He said that if a sparrow can't fall from the sky without God knowing about it, what makes us think that an empire or a great nation can be, can be built without God's hand? And so, ironically, the resolution never passed because they started fighting among themselves about why it wasn't passing. Uh, ultimately, though, it seemed to have an influence because they settled that issue by creating Congress with uh, a House where population determined representation right. and a Senate where all the states were equal. Uh, so I've always enjoyed that story. The last part of it is that it was on July 4th, 1826, that both Jefferson and Adams passed away, they had reconciled in their old age in letters written back and forth, very tender in some ways, those letters. And when he died on July 4th, uh, Adams said, Thomas Jefferson still survives. But Jefferson had died five, years, uh, five hours earlier. Now, I've always interpreted that to mean that Adams was saying the spirit of spirit. Jefferson yeah. will continue to live in America. Uh, Abraham Lincoln said later that it could not possibly be a coincidence that those men died just a few hours from, apart from each other on the day that we celebrate our independence. Uh -huh. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the commentary. Um, you also shared on Capitol Beat uh, a study from Sooner Poll uh, on how the Republican Party has plateaued here in Oklahoma. I'm uh, going to talk about that. Yeah, just very quickly, and I encourage readers to go to Capitol Beat OK and look at this poll. Um, number one, 2008, identification of moderates actually almost equaled identification of conservatives. Conservatives dropped a little bit, moderates accelerated, even liberals accelerated some in early 2008. Then 2010, uh, after disappointment, I think, with President Obama, came the Republican tsunami. Yeah. 
And then in 2012, Republicans more than held their own. But if you look at the data, which Bill Shepard has done in this poll, I think there's at least a chance that the Republican dominance has uh, plateaued, has peaked, and might even erode if there's a resurgence of a more moderate wing in the Democratic Party able to offer policy ideas to appeal to that broad middle. Well, that's keep, the summary of it. All right. People can read more about that and other stories at capitalbeatok.com. For Pat McGuigan, I'm Alex Cameron. Have a great day.